Hi guys, it's been a while since I made a video to post on uh, YouTube, and I wanted to make a cool one on understanding how uh, the phenomenon of cymatics works. Because it took me a couple of years to really understand all the different pieces and put it all together to just really uh, understand it, understand what I was seeing. It's one of the most interesting things I've ever seen. It's very simple, and anyone could make it at their house. You know, you can just kind of put something together and create like a little, um, you know, contraption that can demonstrate this phenomenon. And you can even use it, you know, use a little piece of paper to do it, you know, and just kind of slide a string or something against it. But a few different uh, principles that I, uh, you have to understand to understand this phenomenon. The first principle is, well, first of all, what you're looking at is a plate with some kind of medium on, medium on it. And the video I'm going to present in this video is going to be um, um, a video that has sand on it. And, um, but you can use all sorts of me mediums. They use water and oil and you name it, right? And so um, when you have sand on the, the surface, it's, it's kind of, it has certain qualities that are really interesting to notice, but um, overall it's the same thing if you use any uh, medium. But basically, you have this speaker that's on the bottom of this plate, and it's vibrating certain frequencies, and you could just hear it. I'm going to have it, you know, um, you know, I'm going to put the sound up so you can hear it too. This video is the first one I ever saw, and it's, I think, the best one I've ever seen. There's other videos too, but it really shows you everything you need to see. Um, but what's interesting is, so you have this machine that's feeding a certain frequency into the speaker. The speaker is the amplifier, okay? It amplifies the, um, the, the, the signal coming in. Um, you have some other source that's actually giving the wave of energy, so that I guess you can maybe consider that the amplifier. But you have a knob on it. The knob is just pure information, okay? You have to understand there's information, there's uh, amplification, and amplification creates waves, okay, of different, like, you know, the intensities. And you have um, an, an interference pattern, you know, these waves and, and solids interacting, okay? So what's happening here is whenever you switch the frequency to whatever frequency is, it stays there and it modifies the surface. Now, um, the thing is, till you change the frequency, whatever happens on the top of that is going to stay very stationary. So, for example, if you were to run your fingers across that, you know, the sand and kind of disturb it, it's going to reorganize back into that shape that the frequency is basically at, okay? The, the shape that is the right frequency, um, it's, it's the right shape for that frequency. And what you'll notice in medicine, if you, if you want to look at, let's say, uh, biophysics in this, in, in, you know, and use this metaphor to kind of like you know, put it into biophysics, you're going to, um, you, you'll see that medicine and surgery deals with the surface level. Whereas things like, um, you know, um, emotional healing, homeopathy, energetic healing, vibrational healing, all the kind of the vibration-based remedies or, um, you know, uh, systems of healing or information-based systems of healing work on the frequency modulation part, okay? So that's why you never have success in medicine, in modern medicine. They never hit the chronic level of the condition because they're just rubbing the surface around. They're just manipulating things on the surface. But the problem is coming from the core information systems of the mind and body and the energetics of the mind and body, you know, what's being created energetically. And what you're also noticing is whenever the frequency changes, it goes from um, order to chaos to order. Now what happens is whenever it goes into a, a resting kind of state of order where you can see all the, like the pieces are really nice and beautiful, that's when the energy is hitting a resonance. And that's something you can understand if you study um, wave physics through strings, okay? Or uh, this physics of strings. And what it is is, um, uh, when something goes into resonance, it means that the energy is moving the most efficiently at the most efficient level that it can possibly move in that system. And whenever you tweak it a little bit, the energy starts to do some weird, other weird stuff. So for a string, you know, we have the harmonics. The first harmonic is the first level of efficiency that uh, the energy moves like perfectly in that system, as perfectly as it's going to get. We have the second harmonic of a string. It's, you know, that's when it's moving um, 
that's when the energy is moving at the next most uh, intense, you know, uh, the, the, it's, it's moving at an intenser level, the energy, okay, there's more energy coming into the system, but it's also finding a sweet spot, okay, it looks kind of like, like an eight, like on its side, like not like this, but like this, right, and I'll have a video of some kind of string, um, you know, physics experiment you can watch. So essentially, what you're looking at um, is resonance. You know, the energy is moving efficiently and then we're moving it to a point where the energy coming into the system in the cymatics experiment isn't quite what this medium and the plate can handle. So it starts going into this chaotic pattern till we hit the next resonance, okay? So really, I think the implications of this in physics is massive and I think it's completely underrated, totally underrated. Um, if you ask most, uh, you know, people in uh, physics, they might know of experiments, or they might have heard of the phenomena, but they don't realize how important it is. If you ask people in medicine, they don't know, they don't care for the most part. They don't see the value in what this is demonstrating. Thank you. Enjoy.